Um, hi everyone. So, um, for instance, imagine that you don't have uh, the last the knuckle of your fingers. Imagine that um, you go through life daily experiencing an issue to, for example, grab a cup, or furthermore, not being able to use your nails. Well, sadly, this is the daily life of 22 million cats that were deployed, not for natural reasons, not by accident, but because their owners decided that you know, they didn't want their cats to have nails. Um, today, I will describe for you the negative effects of cat decloning. Um, in this presentation, I will start by defining cat decloning then I will proceed to discuss, discuss the physical and emotional effects of cat decloning. Um, lastly, I will offer an alternative that I've used uh, that is harmless for cats and that won't damage your puppy. So, um, cat decloning is the surgical procedure in which uh, you amputate the end of the bone in order for cats not to be able to use their claws. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this is how the claw normally looks. Uh, this is the actual procedure in which you get rid of the end bone, and this is how the cat looks, well, the uh, paw looks after it's the claw. Uh, the end bone is not present anymore, and of course the nail is gone. Um, well, according to veterinarian, Electronic. The main reason people deploy their cause is uh, the cat's claws is due to property damage. So people um, have, are having their cats clawing their furniture, their beds, and you know they they do this procedure on their cats. Uh, what they don't know is that scratching is actually a natural behavior. While cats do it, would do it. Um, it's just a way for them to sharp their claws and as well as an uh, uh, alternative for them to work out their hands. So the physical effects of this, according to the um, PAW Project, a documentary about Kathy Chloe, um, arthritis is one of them. Uh, Jennifer Hubbard of a tenure area states, the cats sit back on the wrist and this causes arthritis. So arthritis is uh, inflammation um, on joints. So all these red, red areas over here is where the cat experiences the pain because of the imbalance in, the, in their paws. Um, then following we have uh, lateness. This is a video <coughs> of a wild cat um, that was declawed. As you can see, he has uh, issues walking because of um, the declaw. He doesn't have balance. He needs the... Um, and bones in order to um, so here is this wild cat you know its majesty having problems and issues to walk uh, another of the effects of cat decloning is an outer posture which is uh, imbalance of the of the way the cat sits and stands and this is, as you can see, for example, in this picture, uh, the cat does not show a balance. It's not almost like a straight line while he's sitting. Um, it's just they, they're trying to avoid to put weight on their paws because it's painful for them. So they just uh, avoid putting weight on their front paws and therefore their posture is altered. Um, the emotional effects, according to um, Jackson Galaxy at Cat Behaviors, um, the effects are aggression, uh, maybe. Um, the nails are the first line of defense of a cat. When you take away their nails, they feel defenseless. They are uh, pretty much uh, feeling constant threat all the time. So they record to their feet, which is the second line of defense for a cat. Uh, they bite constantly, and it's pretty much a state of stress for them. Stress is the following effect. The cat is frightened. Uh, he feels if anything happens to them, uh, they won't have a way to uh, fight back or, you know, uh, protect themselves. Early 
illuminated outside of the box is another of the effects. Uh, the first reason for this to happen is because, um, well, the cat is in order to uh, mark their territory. This is a way for them to tell the other cats, uh, this is my territory, please respect my space. Uh, but this is also because they are afraid and they are scared. Um, the other reason um, the cat also defecates outside of the litter box is because the texture of the li of the litter is harmful for the paws because it's it you know it triggers that sensation of them not having uh, balance. An alternative, uh, I rescued a senior cat that was living in the street. Of course, he has a lot of wild behaviors. Um, actually, uh, when he arrived to the house, as you can see, he was pretty active scratching. Oh. Uh, he was scratching the bed, he was uh, scratching different things, but things with fabric uh, were the, his favorites. Uh, of course, I would never declaw a cat that removes, amputate one of their body parts just to take care of objects. So. Um, what I did was uh, I bought a scratching post. Uh, this is the scratching post. Um, this, the, this process took one week, one week and a half. Uh, the price, the average price for this at Pet Force, Pet Smart is $14. And as you can see in the picture, he actually loves it. And this is a harmless alternative for the cat not to have a surgical amputation of um, his uh, so uh, today I will share a quote of our regretful cat owner that states the following. It was seriously the worst decision I've made in my entire life. It's such an injustice because their doctors are not telling us what they do to them. Um, I'm sure that a lot of owners are not aware of what happens to their pots where they are declawed. Uh, this is an unnecessary amputation for the animal, this is a living being. This is a, you know, this is a pet. This is someone we share our house with, someone that's part of our family. So, if you are having problems with your cat clone, just make sure you can get an alternative. Um, that's it for today. Thank you. All right, Cox, what did you think? Well, uh, I thought it was a good speech. I thought the intro was good. Um, I thought that there was a good road mapping of uh, what the speech was going to be about. I thought there was uh, good uh, quotations in the speech, especially at the end there. Um, I liked the diagrams. It helped to really visualize it. I thought um, my attention was grabbed about you know, the missing your nails. That was good. Uh, you know, there was a good video. Um, one thing, though, that during the video, you didn't really, like, I don't think that was a house cat, and maybe you could have said what kind of cat that was, but that's not really a big issue. Um, the whole thing was pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was a, a really good speech, and there was a lot of good points made. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I thought you had a nice visualization, dramatic visualization at the beginning. Uh, with the, the idea of working without the fingers. I thought that was fine. The topic's clearly identified. I don't really have anything that I see as being problematic in the introduction of the speech. Um, I thought it all worked very well. Uh, the visualization about what cat declawing is is explained pretty well. You integrate that into the presentation effectively. You've got that one um, visual with the three steps in it and you kind of walk us through that quickly and you don't uh, make that the point of the speech the process but rather you know just kind of background on uh, what's what the problems are because that's what your focus is what the uh, problems are with cat declawing I thought that was fine I also thought you did a good job tr 
you, know, you get you get a little preachy kind of at the end about turning it into a persuasive speech. Not, it's not quite a persuasive, but we could easily see how it would fit into the persuasive category if you pushed it in that direction. But I thought you did a pretty good job trying to focus just on here what the consequences of this are. I do think that uh, especially if you're going to keep it informative, it might make sense to talk a little bit more about why this has become something that people do, uh, why they think it's acceptable, uh, you know, that, there, that there's controversy on it. For instance, there are some places that ban this sort of thing. We've got cities that uh, are passing laws that you can't do this sort of thing to uh, your pets. Um, on the other hand, you know, people who, do the, who take this option you make it sound as if they're doing it thoughtlessly without any consideration of what the consequences are, but maybe they, you know, maybe there are reasons that they choose to do this. So uh, maybe a little bit more balance for the informative presentation would, would be helpful. That's, that's about as mild a criticism as I can think of for the speech. I thought you did an excellent job, like I said, citing information and integrating the visuals into the presentation. I do think that uh, we could probably do without the big... Um, uh, we'll dysphasia you for a moment. Wallpaper in the back of the Prezi presentation. In other words, I think that the giant cat image that you have in the background most of the time is a little bit distracting and focus more on the stuff that's inside. That Again, that's a minor quibble sort of thing, but I, I think it, uh, like I said, distracts a little bit. But I like the visuals that you had, the things that you did focus on. I thought you uh, integrated them well into the speech. Um, sometimes you depend a little bit on the visuals to make the transitions between points rather than giving us a verbal transition along with that. There are a couple of spots, for example, where it was all entirely that there's a visual transition that's going on and so your movement from one point to the other sounds a little bit awkward. I can see that you've moved from one idea to the next, but listening to you it doesn't flow very smoothly. and that. When you watch back, I think you'll pick up one or two of those places where that happens. Um, I like the humor there in that last uh, visual. I think you have some fun with that. I understand what he's saying about the uh, the mountain lion in the image. Although you, I thought I did hear you say mountain lion in the in in describing it. Would have been nice if we could have seen a cat going through that, but maybe you give a little bit of a justification for this, you know, uh, that this is the large image or this is the one example I could find online that gives you a clear image of this. Uh, it's uh, very clear when the animal's walking down the plank there that it's having trouble trying to get comfortable and that sort of thing. We don't know what the context is. You know, is that a zoo? Is it a, uh, a rescue a center? Sanctuary. A sanctuary. For people that had illegal and so probably that had happened to the pet before it came to the yeah. sanctuary. Sanctuary people wouldn't have done that, you know, that kind of thing. So maybe a little bit more context on that. that that's a minor thing. All right. Thank you.